Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back to do two more last 32 matches here. And in this video we will see Pilk taking on Dino Nerd and Darius going up against Blood Moon. Some exciting matches here. So let's get on with them. Alright, up first for Pilk we have a Baryonyx. This Baryonyx is probably the key for Pilk if they want to win this match. Because it will be at a type advantage against all three of Dino Nerd's dinos. Which is why having a, te having a team of all the same element is not really a good idea. Because if you get a matchup like this, you know, you, you kind of dig yourself deep in a hole. Anyway, as for Dino Nerd's first dino, we have a Giganonosaurus. I will say, the saving grace for Dino Nerd is that not all their moves are fire moves, so... As if they can get the rock and paper moves off, then standard damage will be dealt, so... There is that as a saving grace, but the Baryonyx has all water moves, so if the Baryonyx gets a hit off, it will do damage. And the Baryonyx's moves are all balanced, so the crit doesn't do significantly more damage than his other two moves. So whichever hit the Barry gets off will do damage. And, unfortunately for Dino Nerd, it's an Aqua Web. Boosh. And yeah, look at that. And a Shockwave as well, which basically means that the Baryonyx is probably going to get the next hit as well, which means that Pelt is probably going to be 1-0 up. Okay, so Rock. And yet, yeah, as I suspected, the Giganonosaurus biting the dust early on. And look at that, I didn't even get a hit. Well, I got a tie off, and that's it. Right, as for Dino Nerd's second Dino, we have an Albertosaurus. Although, I will feel if Albertosaurus can get past the Barry, I, I do think that Dino Nerd will still have a chance because, because of that Dino Tactic. But the key for Dino Nerd, he's got to get past this Barry. If the Barry goes 2 0 up, then I'd probably say Pilk has won the match, will win the match. And it looks like Pilk's going to be 2-0 up. I mean, not with this hit, but if he gets a shockwave off, then yeah, he will be 2-0 up. Okay, no shockwave this time. Dino Nerd's still with a chance. Oh, never mind, that chance is gone. <laughs> oh my god, Bob, this is ridiculous. I mean, I called it. I said, if you face a Dino with a, the type of bandit over your whole team, that this is going to happen. So I did call that, I guess. Well, it's all up to Terry Dino Tector now. Will Dino Nerd actually get a hit in this match? I mean, that hasn't exactly helped the fact that Pelk has got basically two Aqua Whips. Although, this Terry does have the Dino Stuffer, so it can stop that Aqua Whip from activating. So, I'd still say Dino Nerd has a very slim chance of winning. But it's going to be one hell of a comeback. Oh! Terry getting the first hit off on the Barry and Dino Nerd finally fighting back. And a Volcano Burst here would be very convenient. Nope. I would honestly say that at this rate, I think Ultimate Fire will, Dino Tech will probably activate when the Barry is still alive. <laughs> okay, Terry getting off another hit. Come on, Dino Nerd, I'm rooting for you, I'm rooting for you. Fight back, kill this Barry. Show him who's boss. Ooh, a Volcano Burst as well. If Terry can get off the next hit on this Barry, then Dino Nerd, I think, would be slowly crawling their way back into the match. Oh, that's a tie. But again, I think that'll suit Terry, even though Dino Nerd is losing. That bar is filling up, and look at that! An ultimate fire on Pilk's second Dino, and all of a sudden, Dino Nerd will be right back in the match. As for Pilk's second Dino, we have a Megalosaurus. I suspect one hit from the Megalosaurus, if that hit is a secret move, will end the match. Especially if it's Gigantic Fall. I love Megalosaurus, so cool, I love his design.
Ooh, I tell you what, Terry getting off another hit. And the bar has filled up, so you know what that means? It's Dino Tech to time. Is this the break that Dino Nerd needed? Because if he does get off an ultimate fire, I think Terry's moves will slightly do more will do slightly more damage after the woods. Although his moveset will be gone. Oh, is it time? I think it's over. I think Dino Nerd is lost. Oh, how costly is this? How costly is this going to be? A chance missed for Dino Nerd to storm back in the match. And instead... Oh, he survived! Oh, it's going to be tight. And, oh, it's over. Oh, what a chance missed for Dino Nerd to get off Ultimate Fire. And Pilk... Pulls away in the end. Dino Nerd just had a bit too much to do there. But, you know, a valiant effort coming back there with Terry. However, the Megalosaurus proved too tough. Right. Time to move on to our other match of this session, which sees Darius taking on Blood Moon. Alrighty then. Up first for Darius in the red corner, we have a Lexovasaurus. We definitely see what this thing can do, and if it gets off a Quake Saber, it could be a big early lead for Darius. Because in the blue corner for Blood Moon, we have Chomp. Well, at first, Chomp was nothing but fodder, but we have seen glimpses of what it can do. And I think if Chomp wants to avoid an early defeat here, they've got to stop that Quake Saber. Well, recovery won't do anything because if Lex Overzorus gets off a Quake Saber, Chomp is dead. Ooh, there's the attack boost. Well, especially now because of attack boost. Of course, Quake Saber only gets triggered after a tie. So as long as Chomp can prevent a tie from happening, the Quake Saber will not be activated. And there's a lightning strike on Lexobosaurus, but there's that type advantage there, limiting the damage. Well, it's not Quake Saber, but it'll still pack a punch this crit, and will still do a lot of damage. And look at that, if I was Quake Saber, Chomp would have died. Oh, that's a tie. A recovery would be very useful for Chomp here. And a recovery is exactly what Chomp's gonna get. And here comes a Kamikaze Tackle, which will deal a decent amount of damage to the Lexovasaurus. Oh my god, it killed it! Oh, that's right, because Chomp is super crisis type, so it does. So he's stronger when his health is really low, like that. And that is how the Lexovasaurus bit the dust! And that is how Blood Moon has got this 1-0 lead. Alright, as for Darius' second dino, we have a Eustrepta Spondylus. The beast that was responsible both for defeating Toga in the group stage. Although, it's going to have a bit of work to do because Chomp has looked quite impressive. And that recovery has definitely helped Blood Moon turn the screw on this match. Ooh, there's the crit though. I think this is lethal. Well, it should be. Yeah. Alright, as for Blood Moon's second dino, we have the very popular Baryonyx. This Baryonyx is quite attack minded there. As, as most of them are. And honestly, it feels. Baryonyx would have been the last dino I thought would be the most popular dino in this tournament, but it is. I don't know whether that's something to do with me posting about you, me using Baryonyx in my team or whatever, I don't know. Although a lot of the teams where Baryonyx are in were entered before I made that, the vid, my team showcase video, so I don't know. Anyway, what I do know is that the Eustrepta Spondylus 
will be protected by the Dino Illusion. So even if Baryonyx gets off a hit, the Dino Illusion will stop the damage. There's the Dino Swim. Sizable damage dealt, and there's the Aqua Vortex, which I think will actually play around Dino Illusion. But we're not going to find out, because the Baryonyx gets off the hit, but the Dino Illusion will stop it, and because Baryonyx got off that hit, the chance of Aqua Vortex has been missed. See, I think it would have been better for Blood Moon if that was a tie, because Aqua Vortex would go through the Dino Illusion, but no matter. The Baryonyx still get him off the hit there, but another Dino Illusion has been triggered. This time though, the Eustreptus Bondolus gets off the crit. Ooh, and a Cyclone as well. Which means, actually yeah, it means that Eustreptus Bondolus will get damage off no matter what. Well, it don't need any of Cyclones or Dino Illusions because you strap the Spondylus got off the crit to finish off the Baryonyx and give Darius a 2-1 lead. Alright, as for Blood Moon's third Dino, we have a Pachycephalosaurus. A secret Dino which is actually unique because it doesn't have any secret moves and it seems to have worked for Blood Moon. I mean, I like to have secret moves on... I like to have at least one se secret move on them because... You know, if it gets triggered, you get that type advantage then, which limits the damage you take if you get hit. Just to add a bit of resilience, but no matter. It's worked for Blood Moon. But it might not work this time, though. Do you strap the Spondylus? Wow, three crits in a row, and look at that damage. I think that's because this you strap the Spondylus is Crisis type. And he's still protected by that Dino Illusion. Well, not anymore. The Pachycephalosaurus finally getting off the hit and finally putting an end to Dino Illusion. However, what hasn't ended is Darius' lead in this match. Ooh. And if a Cyclone gets activated here... Oh my god, almost killed it! Um... No, no, if, if, uh, well, Blood Moon has to get the next hit then anyway, so. And he will not get the next hit. And instead, Darius is going to pull out the win and defeat Blood Moon. And book their place in the last 16. Wow, a very impressive display by the Eustrep the Spondylus. Looked really good. And Darius will go on to face Pilk in the last 16. Right, that's going to end this session here, so stay tuned for next time, where we will see Chompstam taking on the Poke, and Ibuki taking on the Champions team. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer, signing out.